That was actually one of the songs we used to sing in the choir, and I really loved listen, listening to the choir sing it. I really did. And we're going to start having the choir again soon, very soon. The Sunday before uh, Thanksgiving will be our first practice. So I'm going to be grabbing old choir members and new choir members <laughs> so that we can practice. Huh? Manasseh, maybe. Yeah. What? I'll do it. Why is she throwing me under the bus? She's not throwing you under the bus. She's throwing you in the choir loft. Yeah. Acts chapter 25, verse 21. Acts 25, verse 21. And um, let's see, where are we at here? This is the end of the chapter of Acts 25. And if you remember the story in Acts 25, 24, in Acts 24, Paul goes before Felix. And... Felix kind of hangs on to him for a couple of years because he's hoping to get a little money out of it before he moves him on, which he never does. And so uh, Felix kind of moves off the scene and then Festus moves in. And I can't, I, I can't, I'm sorry, I, but every time I hear the name Festus, I just think of an old Western that used to be on TV called Gunsmoke. There's a guy named Festus on there. But uh, and so this Festus, if he, you know, if we could hear him speak, he'd sound like this. But anyway, Festus. <laughs> Um, he now has Paul, and he Paul is um, before Festus, and we get to the end of the chapter, and uh, that's when King Agrippa arrives. And if you remember, King Agrippa shows up, and there is some um, behind-the-scenes connection uh, between them and, and other important people, really. And so uh, Festus begins to explain to King Agrippa about this guy Paul. And so uh, that's kind of where we are in the story. And so we pick up in verse 21. And I, want, I just want to read the rest of the chapter. So starting in verse 21, um, it says this. But when Paul had appealed to be reserved unto the hearing of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I might send him to Caesar. So this is uh, Festus here. Then Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear the man myself. Tomorrow, said he, thou shalt hear him. And on the morrow, when Agrippa was come, and Bernice, with great pomp, and was entered into the place of hearing with the chief captains and principal men of the city, at Festus' commandment, Paul was brought forth. And Festus said, King Agrippa, and all men which are here present with us, ye see this man, about whom all the multitude of the Jews have dealt with me, both at Jerusalem and and also here, crying that he ought not live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I have determined to send him, of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my Lord. Wherefore, I have brought him forth before you, and specially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination had, I might have somewhat to write. For it seemeth to me unreasonable to send a prisoner and not withal to signify the crimes laid against him. So, uh, the situation here is that Festus now has talked about Paul to King Agrippa. And King Agrippa is intrigued, at the very least. And he says, yeah, you know what? I think I want to talk to this guy. Bring him out. So the next day, uh, they do. They bring him out. And so that's when King Agrippa gets to question Paul. So in verse 21, it says, but when Paul had appealed to be, now this is Festus talking, he's still explaining the case to King Agrippa, and he said, but when Paul had appealed to be reserved unto the hearing of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I might send him to Caesar. Now, um, it's believed by most conservative Bible scholars that the reigning emperor at this time was most likely Nero. And so, and yet he calls him Augustus. And so, uh, Augustus, uh, they believe, is somewhat of a title, okay? Um, during that time period that they would call the Caesar, whoever the Caesar was, Augustus. And in reality, the word is actually Sebastos. Sebastos kind of sounds like Tabasco, but it's not. 
sabastos, and that, you know, at its root, the meaning is uh, to be worshipped. And so you kind of can see that that same Greek word used in Romans 1.25. It's not important, but just so that you can know that that's the root of the word. So they think that that's kind of where the word Augustus, maybe maybe there's some connection there. Um, think of it in terms of, of, of um, you know, like the venerable one. Okay, the exalted one or something of that nature. Um, and the title was first used by Caesar Octavianus, who was the Roman emperor at the time when Jesus was born. Luke chapter 2. The Caesar, the, the, uh, the census by Caesar Augustus, okay? But that really wasn't his name either. So Augustus was kind of like, you know, just a title that they would take, my name is Augustus, you know, I'm the venerable one. You must worship me, blah, blah, blah. Um, we, we don't know how long of a time period that Paul had to wait under Festus. We know under Felix it was two years, Festus comes along, but it doesn't seem like a real long time. It, it just seems like maybe a shorter period of time. It could have been, you know, a couple of months or maybe even shorter than that. We, we're not really sure. Uh, but he, uh, we do know that when Agrippa comes, it was certain days, because that's what it said in verse 13, Next 25, 13. So that kind of indicates a shorter period of time. So not a lot of time has gone by. Paul was under Festus, I'm, I'm sorry, under Felix for two years. Then Festus comes in. Festus goes down to Jerusalem. He's there with the Jews. He goes back up, takes a group with him. And it's been certain days now. So you're probably looking a month, two months maybe. And now he is going to speak to Agrippa. I mean, think about this for a moment. Think about the fact that Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles, and that he knows that he is going to preach before kings and so on and so forth. He's been doing that all along the way. Um, you know, two years with Felix, you know he had a chance to really break things down with Felix, really explain a lot of detail. And then he's with Festus, and, you know, we, we already know what he said to Festus, and now he's going before King Agrippa. So how many people actually get the opportunity to witness to people of that, you know, that position. Um, you know, you may get to witness to your direct supervisor. Um, and that's a good thing because you have a lot of contact with them. But, um, you know, I remember when I was, when I was in, uh, when I was in the Air Force, I, I was a staff sergeant and a lieutenant colonel, our squadron commander came in and cursed God. And, uh, and I had a, I had a, a rule and, you know, this is my personal rule in the control room. There were five or six of us that worked in control room. If they cursed God, then that was uh, that was open door. I told them, I said, you curse God, that's open door for me to start preaching. And I would. So now in comes this lieutenant colonel. He gets mad about something during an exercise and he curses God. All eyes are on me. I said, sir, can I speak to you privately for a moment? So we went outside and I asked him not to do that. I told him I was a Christian. Immediately he got religious. Oh, well, I used to teach Sunday school back when I was in the States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, sir, you're a far cry from a Sunday school teacher right now. And he said, yeah, I'll try to be careful. So he went on about his way. A few minutes later, I went back inside, and my boss goes, you didn't. I said, well, what makes him any different of a man than you? His position? Now, here's Paul. He's got an opportunity. The point is, if you get the opportunity, it doesn't matter who they are. Tell them. You know, there's going to be a lot of very rich and important people in hell. And some of it's going to be our fault because we didn't tell them. All right. So we need to be very careful. Well, we'll be responsible for not telling you. Let me put it that way. Okay. So Paul has been preaching now to all of these big, famous people. So verse 22 says, Then Agrippa said unto Festus, Huh, that's interesting. I would hear the man myself. So Paul has his interest. He's intrigued. He wants to know more about this guy, probably because, after all, Felix held him for, you know, two years and never sent him on. And then, you know, the it's very clear that the Jews want to kill him. And it's very clear that, that Festus doesn't know what to do with him. He's just a difficult case. So Agrippa's like, sounds like an interesting guy. I want to hear him myself. Send him to me. Tomorrow, said he, he there being... Uh, Festus, thou shalt hear him. So from Agrippa's response, it doesn't initially sound as if Festus was 
It doesn't, to me, when I read this, I don't think Festus was making a formal request. I think they were just kind of hanging out together or something, you know, or doing their thing. And, and Festus says, yeah, you know, I got this guy named Paul. You're not going to believe this. This is this story, King. You know, let me tell you about this. And he tells him about it. And King Agrippa goes, wow, that's pretty interesting. I'd like to hear this guy myself. So I don't think it was a formal request. It might have been. I don't know. But it doesn't initially sound like a formal request. Um, but Agrippa's interest is so piqued that he just wants to see Paul and hear Paul's testimony for himself. And Festus is quite happy. He's, he says, you're not going to believe this. I got this guy named Paul. This dude is a headache. He's giving me all this trouble. I don't know what to do with him. I'm supposed to send him to Caesar, Caesar but I can't send him to Caesar because I, I don't have a crime. And Agrippa goes, interesting case. I'd like to hear him. And Festus goes, oh, yeah. Oh, of course, King Agrippa, if you want to hear him, I'll be more than happy to let you hear him. He's glad to get this responsibility off his back. Quite happy to oblige him. So verse 23, it says, And on the morrow, when Agrippa was come, and Bernice, with great pomp, pump, and was entered into the palace of hearing. So here comes King Agrippa and Bernice, his wife. And I use that term loosely. And they come in with great pomp, you know. Da, 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 da. They come in, you know, all big shot and stuff. And all eyes are on King Agrippa and everybody is watching everything. He enters into the place of hearing with the chief captains and principal men of the city at Festus' commandment, Paul was brought forth. So all these important guys are there and King Agrippa comes in and then Festus brings in Paul. If you stop to think about it... Um, you know, though it might have looked quite perilous from man's perspective, from a spiritual perspective, God is really using Paul. Because now he's got not only Festus, not only King Agrippa, not only Bernice, but who else? You know, all these chief men of the city, all the important guys. Everybody is there. What an audience. I don't know what I would do if some Sunday morning, the mayor of Kunsan and, you know, the wolf from the base and all the... You know, the group commanders and, you know, the city council and everybody came to church here. I'd be like, whoo You know, you could go two ways with that. You could go, oh, man, this could be bad. Or you could go, probably not going to get this opportunity again. You know, knowing me, knowing that I'm probably not going to go to jail for saying anything silly. Um, I'd probably just go, yeah, I'm just going to let these guys have it. Both barrels of the gospel gun. I'm going to blow them away. I might only get one chance, you know. Paul's got this opportunity here before him. And for some people, that might be a scary thing, but not him. He's got quite an audience. He's got a king. He's got a queen. He's got a governor. He's got leading citizens of the city, some leading Roman officials within earshot, all of these people listening to his preaching. So Paul is blessed. If you look at it from a, pure, a spiritual perspective, he's blessed to have an opportunity to share his personal testimony before a very high level group. So in verse 24, and Festus said, King Agrippa and all men which are here present with us, ye see this man. So he's directing attention. I just kind of in my mind's eye saying, you know, I to Festus, King Agrippa and all you people, you got to see this guy. There he is right there. And he points at Paul and he says, ye see this man about whom all the multitude of the Jews have dealt with me, both at Jerusalem and also here, crying that he ought not to live any longer. So remember what Festus did. When Festus first came, he, he, you know, he came to Caesar, Caesarea to take the job from Felix, but first he goes down to Jerusalem. He went to Jerusalem and he was there in Jerusalem with the leaders there. And we already know that he has in his mind to keep the Jews happy. And the leaders in Jerusalem were like, hey, why don't you uh, just send Paul down here? And they were planning on killing him before he ever got to Jerusalem. And Festus says, well, I got a better idea. You know, I'm supposed to send him on to Caesar, so I got to kind of keep him there in Caesarea. So if you guys have something against him, come with me. We'll go back up there to Caesarea, and we'll have trial up there. And so they go up there, but you remember from the earlier part of the chapter how the trial went. It didn't, you know, they couldn't find anything against Paul. So Festus just kind of locks him up again. And then King Agrippa comes to town. So Festus begins here by stating that he's had uh, a, you know, a great deal of time, well, some time dealing with Paul's case. And it's been difficult. He says a multitude of Jews have been bothering him. They want Paul killed. 
But he's got nothing to kill him for. Nothing to execute him for. Um, I don't know uh, about the laws in Korea so much, but I think it's probably accurate to say, even for Korea. But I know in America, if I, if I were in America and one day I walked outside and I said, I am God. That doesn't break any laws. And you might say, you are crazy. <laughs> but I can proclaim to be anything I want as long as, you know, I don't, in, you know, as long as I don't push in on your rights, I can say any kind of crazy thing about myself as I want to. You know, and I can preach any kind of crazy religion I want to. And I told you before, there's a, a religion in America where they worship, basically worship a bowl of spaghetti noodles. And it started as a joke and then somebody got serious about it. And now it's kind of a deal. You know, the great spaghetti monster in the sky or something, whatever they call him. It's kind of crazy, but doesn't break any laws. You can do a lot of things that don't break laws especially in the realm of religion, and certainly in America, and I believe in Korea, you've got freedom of religion to that extent too. So I think it's pretty much the same. In Rome, they had the same thing. The only thing you had to do was swear allegiance to Caesar. After that, you could, you could worship a bowling ball if you wanted to. I don't, think, I don't even know if they had bowling back then, but you get the point. They didn't care. I mean, what's another god? They already had, you know, a thousand gods. So who cares if... They have one more. Paul hadn't broken any laws. So here's Festus. The pre he wants to please the Jews. The pressure is to kill from the Jews. The pressure is to kill Paul. But he doesn't have a legal leg to stand on. So he can't kill Paul. And he can't let him go. Because Paul has appealed to Caesar. And if he does let him go, the Jews will probably kill him anyway. So he's got a problem. And here comes King Agrippa. And so he points this out. Uh, go to Acts 22, verse 22. Um, let's see. Brother, would you read that? Acts chapter 22, verse 22. Acts 22, 22. And they gave him audience unto this word, and then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit so they're crying out. They want him dead. Clearly. But he hasn't broken the law. He's got no reason to, to kill him. So when you, when you start comparing what the Jews want as compared to what Festus has to do, you can understand why he's in such a hard position. So verse 25 it says, in Acts 25 verse 25, but when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, which is what you know, the end of the trial was, and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I have determined to send him. So Festus had a desire to be free of the problem. And if he could have released Paul and been free of the problem, he probably would have. But the thing is, Paul had appealed to Caesar, so he couldn't just let him go. He had to send him on to Caesar. But he had no charge to attach. It's like, you know, uh, it's like, Sending, you got a worker, right? And you don't like this guy for whatever reason. And you really, I mean, he just grates against you the wrong way. And you just want to get him booted out of your shop. And so you send him up to your boss. And yet you got nothing to send him on with. He, you know, you need to talk to this guy. Well, what's he done? Well, nothing really. Then why do I need to talk to him? Well, because you just need to... And you got nothing on him. What are you going to do? You can't. It's just not possible. This is Festus' problem. He's, he has to send him on. He's got no charge. So he really doesn't want to send him on because if he does, that's going to make him look real incompetent. And, I mean, he's a new guy at the job, right? He's just had a job a few months here. Who wants to look incompetent when you're a new guy in the job? So verse 26, he says, Of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my Lord. I got nothing to say. Nothing to write unto my Lord, wherefore I have brought him forth before you, and specially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination had, I might have somewhat to write. So having nothing to accuse Paul, uh, it wouldn't be prudent to send him on to Rome. So Festus was quite happy for King Agrippa 
to try the case because maybe King Agrippa can find something, anything. Can we get him? Can we bust him on jaywalking? Something, anything to send him on. And he's hoping that Agrippa can find a cause to send up with Paul to Rome. But of course, that doesn't happen. We'll get to that in chapter 26. Last verse in chapter 20 or in chapter 25 it says this: For it seemeth to me unnecessary or unreasonable to send a prisoner, and not withal to signify the crimes laid against him. So in other words. I want to send him on to Caesar. I have to send him on to Caesar, but I can't send him on to Caesar because I got no crime. And so that's kind of where the chapter ends. And we pick up in chapter 26, verse 1, where it says, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Speak. And we'll come back to that next week. So that wraps up Acts chapter 25. Any questions or comments on that? Nazi. Good deal. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to close in prayer, and then after that, the, the people that I mentioned earlier today that I need to see upstairs for the uh, missionary review, we're going to do that. Uh, shouldn't take us that long, maybe 10, 15 minutes. And uh, then after that, we're, we're free to go. So uh, if there's no questions or comments, those of you who know who you are and what you're supposed to do, um, I'll see you up there in just a couple minutes. So with that, let's see, uh, Brother Cole, would you close us in prayer?